Okay, so welcome to our kids' Bible study. If you open up your Bibles to Exodus chapter 8, we've been going through the plagues that God sent upon Egypt, and where God's people is the nation of Israel. There are about two million of them. And God told Pharaoh through Moses to let my people go. And Pharaoh was not willing to let God's people go. So he sent plagues. And there are actually ten plagues that are sent in total uh, before uh, Pharaoh finally lets uh, Israel go. And we've looked at the first two already. We saw in Exodus 7 and verse 14 and following that the first plague was the water was turned into blood. River turned unto blood. And that was a type of showing that God has control over Satan's realm. This is really a God contest between Pharaoh's gods and uh, Israel's gods. And it's, it's good for us to learn from because that's really all of us in our own minds have to make a decision as to who is God. God has shown to us He's the one who created this world. He's the one who loved us. He sent His Son to die on a cross for our sins. And He's the one who promises us, promises us eternal life in heaven if we recognize we've sinned and trust in Jesus' death to save us from our sin. But in this world, there are all kinds of other gods. A lot of times it's the God of ourself, not wanting to recognize our sin, not wanting to believe God, but to just do whatever we want to do. So that's when we make ourselves God. Or maybe we make other people God, and we think we're going to do whatever we can to please them, and they're the ones that we care about, and we don't care about God. Or maybe we follow Satan, or, and they're just all kinds of different gods. Some people make Hollywood, the movies, their gods. Some people make food, their god, or an obsession with exercising, or it's just whatever, whatever you set your heart on, whatever you concentrate your time on, that's your god. And we need to understand, we need to, the Bible says that we should serve only the Lord God. And that's because He's the one who created us, He's the one who loves us, and He gives us all the wonderful things in heaven when we believe Him and follow Him. That's why we want to serve the Lord God, even though in our pride and in our selfishness, we'll want to do what we want to do. And these ten plagues show, they demonstrate to Israel and to Egypt that the Lord God is the only God. And so... God puts them in the Bible for us so that we can learn that as well. So we saw in Exodus 7 that the first plague, God turns all the water into blood. Well, if you don't have water, you can't live. you got to be able to drink water, um, have fluid that's not contaminated with blood. So it shows that God has the power over life and He has control over Satan there. And then we saw the second plague last time with the plague of frogs in Exodus 8, 5 through 8, all the way down to verse 15. And we saw there that that's a type of Satan's realm. We saw that last time, that the frogs are like what we see in Revelation 16. It shows that God has control over Satan's. So we saw in the first plague that God has control over Satan's realm by turning the river into blood. And then with this plague, we see that God uh, has control over Satan himself by having the ability to produce this massive amount of frogs and also to get rid of them. And so now today, we're going to look at the next two plagues. They're in Exodus 8. The third plague is the plague of lice in Exodus 8, verse 16. I know when I was a kid, um, they had to check, they checked the, the kids' hair for lice. Lice are just these little bugs that can get into your to your scalp and to your skull, it's just nasty things. And so they'd always they'd have to check your head for lice to make sure you don't have those those bugs in there. Well, it's bad if it's just in your hair, but this plague here, it's all over the place. 
Exodus 8, verse 16, The Lord said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod, and smite the dust of the land, that it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. I don't know if you've ever seen the pictures of Egypt where they have those pyramids out there, but you can see it's desert land. So there's a lot of dust. It's not this big forest. There's a lot of dirt out there. So if all the dust of the land becomes lice, well, that means that's, it's not just some in your hair. It's just all over the place. You can't count millions, maybe even billions of lice all over the place. And that's just nasty, just destroying your life like that. And so it says in verse 17, they did so. For Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth, and it became lice in man and in beast. All the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And so I think what it's showing there, it's a type of showing that without God, you're just miserable. In other words, you can choose to obey Satan and follow him. You can choose to make yourself a God. You don't have to choose God and to be your Lord. You don't have to trust in Jesus to die for your sins. But if that's what you do, if you don't trust in God to die for your sins, the result is you're going to be miserable because you'll end up in a lake of fire. The Bible says that you'll be in torment forever and ever. And that's what lice does. If, if lice, you know, when you're a kid, they check to see if there's any lice in your hair and that bothers you. Well, just think of all the dust in the entire earth is made into lice. It's just a miserable existence. And so it shows that this third plague of lice is showing that you better trust in God. Because if you believe God, you trust that Jesus died for your sins, then you get to be in heaven and you won't have any plagues, anything to worry about. You'll just have love and joy and peace and you'll have a nice mansion and you'll have streets of gold and gates of pearl. It'll be just a wonderful place to live in instead of living with all these lice that's around and just making you miserable. And then verse 18, it says, And the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice, but they could not. So there were lice upon man and upon beast. This is the first time, last time in chapter 8, verse 7, when it came to the frogs, it says the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs upon the land of Egypt. So up to this point, the magicians are able to duplicate what God does through Moses and Aaron. But now when you get to the lice, they can't duplicate it. And what that shows you then, first we've seen with the river turn into blood, that God has control over Satan's realm. Then we saw number two plague with the frogs, that God has control over Satan himself. And now with the lice, we see that Satan doesn't have control in hell. People, sometimes they'll think, oh, I don't want to go to heaven. That's real boring. All you do is fly around and play a harp on a cloud all day. But in hell, that's going to be fun because we're going to party it up and have a good old time. No one's going to tell us what we can and cannot do. But that's not the case. The Bible says in Revelation 14, and I'll read it to you here, in Revelation 14, talking about what hell is like, it says in verse 10 that these people who don't believe God, it says, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. So people think that hell is going to be one big party. Oh, I can drink, I can smoke, I can curse, I can do whatever I want to do. But no, that's not the case. You notice Revelation 14.10 says that the people in hell drink of the wine of the wrath of God. It's not Satan's realm where he can just do whatever he wants. God is in control of that situation. And the people there are burning and they're in torment. It says the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night. And you can see that in the plague of lice. 
Because if the lice represent the anguish and the torment that people will have in hell because they didn't believe God, and the magicians here in Exodus 8.18 couldn't produce the lice. Remember, the magicians are the Egyptian gods, and they represent Satan. And so it shows that in hell, they have no control. So if you go to hell, you're not going to have a good time partying up, having fun. That's not what it's about. It's you'll be in torment forever and ever, and you'll have all these bugs in the fire and everything. It'll be an awful experience, and there's no rest from that. And the fact that the magicians couldn't even bring forth the lice shows you don't have any control over that environment. So don't believe the lies out there that tell you that heaven is boring and hell is a fun place. It's just the opposite. Because when you're in heaven, you have the most wonderful environment ever. You have God's love that you get to experience forever and ever. There's no, there's no pain or sorrow or crying. You get to enjoy life up there. And it's always, you're always joyful, always happy. Nothing bad ever happens. But in hell, it's all bad things that happen. And so, you see there in verse 18 of Exodus 8, the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice, but they could not. So there were lice upon man and upon beast. And then notice verse 19. Then the magician said unto Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. Even these magicians who were representing Satan and Baal worship, worshiping these Egyptian gods, they had to recognize that the Lord God of Israel is the one and only the true God. They said, this is the finger of God. They said, we can't do this. Only the Lord God can do it. And so it shows who is the true God. And then we have just a little bit of time, so we're going to go over the next one, which is the plague of flies. And still, Pharaoh wouldn't let Israel go. And so then God sends this fourth plague of flies on them. And so it says in verse 24, Exodus 8, 24, The Lord did so, and there came a grievous swarm of flies into the house of Pharaoh, and into his servants' houses, and into all the land of Egypt, the land was corrupted by reason of the swarm of flies. And you notice it only happens in among the Egyptians. When you look at Israel, remember Israel is God's people, they don't have the flies. In verse 22, it says, I will sever in that day the land of Goshen in which my people dwell. That's Israel, that's God's people. It says that no swarms of flies shall be there. To the end thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth, and I will put a division between my people and thy people. Tomorrow shall this sign be. And so it shows that the wonderful thing when we talk about the lice and in hell, the wonderful thing when we recognize our sin and we believe that Jesus died for our sins, then we won't have to worry about any swarms of flies or lice or any of this bad stuff. Because we will be completely safe from that. We will be in God's love and we won't experience any bad things. It's only the people in hell that receive these bad things. And so uh, you see the swarms of flies come there in verse 24. And it uh, plagues the land of Egypt. And this is a type of Satan in uh, Matthew chapter 12. In Matthew chapter 12, when, when Jesus cast out devils, the Pharisees there are don't like Jesus because he represents God and the Pharisees represent man and their religion and their gods. And so when Jesus cast out devils, in Matthew 12, 24, it says, But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow, that's Jesus, this fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. Beelzebub is a name of Satan. And really what it means, it means Lord of the flies, is what it literally means. And so that's why in Exodus 8, that's why this fourth plague 
is the plague of flies because Satan is called Beelzebub, the Lord of the flies. And so again, just like with the lice, the magicians didn't have any control of that lice coming on the land of Egypt. They couldn't reproduce it. They couldn't take it away. And it's the same thing when it comes to these flies. And so the Lord has to remove those flies. The, the magicians couldn't do it. They said in the last plague, this is the finger of God. They said, this is God. We don't have any power against God. So God has already shown that He is the only true God and that we need to believe Him instead of doing our own thing and pleasing ourselves. But we need to please God instead, obey God. And here with the swarm of flies then, you see that it takes, again, the Lord has to remove them. The magicians could not repeat them. They could not get away, get them out. And so Pharaoh says, get rid of this, these flies for me. It says in verse uh, 28, Pharaoh said, I will let you go that ye may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only ye should not go very far away and treat for me. In other words, get rid of these flies for me and I'll let you go. But just like people will do, you know, people will promise to do things and they'll say, hey, you know, if you'll, if you'll do me this favor, you'll give me your, your dessert from lunch or you'll give me, let me play with your toy or let me uh, play your video game for a while, then I'll be your friend. But then when they get what they want, they don't treat you nicely. They were only doing it to get what they wanted. And that's what Pharaoh did. He says, I'll let you go. Just get rid of these flies for me. And so, verse 31, the Lord did according to the word of Moses, and he removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants and from his people. There remained not one. And Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time also, neither would he let the people go. And that's why we need to trust God, because God cannot lie. He always does what he says he will do. It's man that will lie to you and say things, but then they'll go back on their word because they're only looking out for themselves. And you see here that even though Beelzebub, or the devil, he's called the Lord of the Flies, he's not really the Lord of the Flies. He can't control that because it's God who brings the flies and it's God who takes them away. And so uh, we're out of time, but hopefully you can see through these first four plagues that God is the only God and he's a loving God too. He always is truthful. He cannot lie. The Bible says God cannot lie. And so since he's promised to give us eternal life in heaven, then we can trust that's true and we won't have to be bothered by all these plagues. Dear Lord, we just thank you for loving us so much that you sent your son to die on a cross. And we thank you that by trusting in that as forgiveness of our sins, that you've given us eternal life in heaven and we have joy and peace there forever and we don't have to worry about the awful things that happen in hell because we won't have to partake in any of that. Thank you so much for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Let me turn the camera off here.